Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again tonight. Tonight I'm doing a little something special, a little something different. One of the uh, antics, one of the guys over in the Annex uh, community, uh, a gentleman by the name of Sam K. You see him in the forums. He's a forum moderator and a con frequent contributor to the Annex project. Um, he has come up with a new suite of utilities to make certain tasks with SSH, SSH, the secure shell. Uh, for remote logins, make that a little easier for uh, for folks to use. Um, um, SSH is primarily done on the command line, uh, but there are a few GUI tweaks that he's done. Lashed together with a VNC server, so you can have a graphical login. You can share files over an SSH connection, um, and a few other neat tricks. So I want to show you how to set that up. Uh, I'm I'm running on MX now. What I've done already is I have set up this guy. This little guy right here, this is a little EPC netbook. Ugh, can't get in the camera, there we go. EPC netbook, it's got a little tiny screen. It is running Antix 17.1. Uh, and also it is running, SSH Suite is installed on it already and some various server components are operating. So I'm going to install this on MX and then we're going to log in and see if we can make it work. So SSH Conduit is available in Synaptic. You can get to it through MX Package Installer 2 if you wish. I typed in the wrong password. Uh, you can get through it through MX Package Installer if you wish. However, um, I'm going to use Synaptic for this particular demonstration. So we're going to look for SSH Conduit is the name of the app. SSH Conduit Annex. Now, I have not re refreshed my uh, sources here lately, so I'm going to do that real quick. Just to make sure I have the latest database of files that are available in the repositories. Just to make sure I haven't missed an update. Okay, SSH, Conduit, ah, Antics, and we're going to click that to install. And you see it's going to install a bunch of other stuff. It's going to install an open SSH server. It's going to install an FTP server. It's going to ask going to install several things required for this suite of packages to operate. Um, so we're going to click mark and then apply. And it shouldn't take too long but I am going to pause the video here because to be honest setting up uh, so installing software is kind of boring. Okay so we're back. Installation's complete. There were no problems. Should have brought in all the dependencies that were required. I am going to mention that for the purposes of this video, and the purposes of this demonstration, I'm doing everything over my local home network. So certain things that you might you may find that after you see this demonstration that you may want to try some of this stuff over a remote internet connection for instance. This is fine. Uh, uh, you can do this. It's going to require you to do a little port forwarding in your home router and there are instructions in the Antix FAQ um, uh, that will help you with that. There's a, there's a section on SSH conduit um, that will help you with the port forwarding or at least tell you the generals because the way you set it up is different for every router. I'm actually not going to set up port forwarding tonight. I have set it up in the past. My current internet service provider doesn't like it. So I'm not going to mess with it right now. But I have done this sort of thing in the past and it's worked rather well. Uh, that way all you need is your outside world internet address. You do your thing to that and the, the router to inside your house takes care of all the other stuff of making sure the connection is made to the right computer. That said, all this is taking place on my home network and I find it useful in that regard as well. So, I'm going to open up. Uh, it's in internet. It's under SSH Conduit. And now we're going to see it's given me a menu of options. I can show the admin center for this local system. Now I am treating this particular this computer here, my this is my ThinkPad. I am, am treating this as my client server. The little guy over here that I showed you a few minutes ago, that's my server system. Okay. Right now it's not doing anything except running the, the, the conduit suite. But eventually that's going to be set up as a media player again. And this may make it handy to do some administration on that media player because I'll run it headless or control it from my phone, for instance. Okay, so let's let's check out some of the things you can do on here. You have open a terminal to a remote system. Now this is kind of the classic um, 
method but uh, of SSH, but instead of all command line, it gives you a nice little dialog here that you can set things up. So I'm going to type in my address. Again, I'm all internal right now. One, two, two. I don't need a port number because I'm not doing any port forwarding account. Now, because SSH, because Secure Shell is encrypted, because it's secure, you got to have an account on the other system. There's not going to be any open connections. There's not going to be Wild West sharing with this, this system. So I need a login name. I already set up a Dolphin account on the other computer, so I'm going to log in as Dolphin. I don't have any parameters. I don't have any remote command that I want to run. I just want the, sh the terminal. So we'll click OK. So here we are. We've clicked uh, Go and it is now asking us for the authenticity of the host. Uh, do we want to accept this key? Yes, this is the key from my computer, uh, from the client system. So I'm going to type yes. It's going to add it. Yes. And now I need the Dolphin on this IP address's password. That is the remote system's password. So I'm going to type that in. And now I am logged in onto my other system. And you'll see that unlike my, uh, on my, uh, I have created this public folder with a small p. That's my test folder. And you see that I'm now logged in, connected to the other system. This is the classic command line login way. You can do this directly from the shell almost as quickly as that. Um, fine. Okay, so we're going to exit out of this because that's, we're probably more interested in the GUI stuff. So, I'm going to crack open a conduit again. And this time we're going to try the VNC open a remote open a desktop on the remote system. Okay? Again, we're going to type in the the number of the server. And let's see, click connect. And you see uh let's see, da, 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 it's asking for the password again the SSH password, the user's password. And now it's asking for the VNC password. One of the things you need to do when you set this up the first time is you have to give the VNC server a password. There is an option in the admin panel that lets you set that up ahead of time. This is required. It has to have a password. So I've given it a password. This is not the same password as my account. And there we are. Now we're seeing the screen of my the remote desktop of my uh, my little bit my, my 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 small laptop you can see it says little bit up here in the window and you can see this is the admin panel for the other system and you can see the different options that I use to set it up so I've got show status of the server I've got show all the inbound connections so recent sessions all sorts of admin type stuff and then also you have change password to the VNC server requires open session that is for changing the password, but that is also for setting up the initial password. Very important. You got to have that. And then also you can set it up so that the VNC server on that system only starts for that session only. Or you can set it up so that it starts every time you log in, which is probably more handy for a server system uh, than that. And of course you can kill all the servers. Now, I, I, again, this is just this is the other system. The uh, the resolution of that system is only you know it's it's a half size monitor so it's 1024 by 600 so so you can see that uh, uh, it fits in a window on my on my larger laptop but it is the uh, uh, a remote system it's just like logging into my regular desktop and again you can see that it's antics on that system um, uh, uh, and and MX over here on my main computer I did that bit to highlight the to make sure everybody is on the up and up that it, it is different the machine and you can see the public folder that we saw in the ls output from the login shell from the from the command line login that we did earlier okay so i'm going to disconnect there okay now we're going to try one more item uh, and that is the file system. Now, this is a very interesting. This is a very interesting item, and I'm probably going to use this for my media center uh, machine. But I'm going to go ahead and link it up. So, add or remove a remote folder to this system. Okay, I don't know what really how this is going to go. Let's set it up. One nine two. One six eight point one point one two two. Now, this port number is when you do port forwarding on your router. We're not doing that, so we're not going to worry with it. 
again the login the remote folder this is a remote folder in the home folder of the other system so I'm going to go with the public folder and the local folder is the folder that's on my it's going to be on my new laptop it's kind of like the mount point okay I could put it in slash media I'm not going to I'm going to put it somewhere easy so the local folder is going to be uh, test public just to have something simple and click OK now it's asking for my password again that's my user's password on the other computer it says it started the file system so let's crack open Thunar and see if we've got one and there's test public and you can see there's nothing in the system okay but I can operate on this folder just like just like it is my regular computer or just like it's my local computer so this is a test file saved exit okay so if we opened up the VNC part again whoops I clicked the wrong thing And again, all this is over an SSH SSL encrypted connection. Now we've logged back in and we see that Let's see here. We see that in public is the test file that we just set up in Thunar. And that is all over encrypted uh, secure connections, private connections. So that is this is an awesome tool to help set up uh, if you need to do remote connections, if you need to do um, uh, uh, it, it remote file sharing. Uh, I'm probably going to use that that file sharing technique to to set up so I can easily add more music to the media player over remote connection. This is going to be brilliant because I can use drag and drop with the with the with the with the file managers. And it's just going to be simple. Uh, the file system is mounted down here, so if you need to unmount that file system, you can just click on this little icon down here. Which one do you want to unmount? Test it. Click it. Succeeded. Done. And you can see that the mount point has actually been removed but the file still exists on the other system uh, one other item and check it out in the in the um, FAQ for for SSH conduit which will be in the antics FAQ if it's not available I don't know if it installs on the on the antic on, on, on MX when you pull in the app but it'll be on the antics website um, it will show you uh, one other item and you probably noticed it Ah, that's not what I wanted conduit let's do let's do the file system one there we go the file system one. you'll notice that it miss, mentions having a profile you can actually set up profile folders that will allow you to uh, uh, do quick connections so you can set up default profiles these profiles are set up in the uh, in the hidden folders uh, under dot config I believe let me uh, find it I was playing around with my with my settings so in SSH conduit yeah dot config SSH conduit you got these template folder you got profiles and they, there's templates provided for you so you can set up things to work ahead of time uh, so that you don't have to set it up every time if you don't want to you can you can pull in these parameters uh, in these profiles and then pull them up inside the connection apps so there's a real quick look at SSH conduit secure shell conduit uh, again uh, an antics uh, developed for the antics project but works just fine on MX and antics and probably on most Debian systems for tips tricks how to's head over to antixlinux.com or throw up a post at antixforum.com this is Dolphin Oracle signing off have a great night